Hello, welcome to our next topic. This is topic 12, redox. And today's section is 12.1, oxidation numbers. The aim for today is to, to be able to assign oxidation numbers to atoms and ions. So we've actually done oxidation numbers, you just uh, didn't realize it. So we're going to go over some of the rules to make this perfectly clear. Oxidation numbers help keep track of the numbers of electrons lost or gained by an atom in a reaction. So oxidation numbers or oxidation states can be positive, negative, or neutral. So you should have your reference table out to your periodic table at this point because we'll be utilizing that. So these help to identify how many electrons are either gained or lost by an atom or an ion. Um, if the oxidation number is zero, this means it's neutral, so there's been no electrons lost or gained. And you'll see a zero would be used when you have an atom. Right? An atom has no charge. If you have a positive one, that would be a positive oxidation number. This tells us that an electron was lost. Remember that if you lose your negatives, you get more positive, since electrons are negative. If you get rid of one, you become more positive. So you group ones, um, which would be uh, the first group on your periodic table. Those would be ones that tend to lose, one, uh, that go to a negative one. Those would be the ones that would be positive one because they give an electron away. Negative one would tell us that you have gained an electron. You've gotten more negative by gaining an electron. These would be in group 17. Some oxidation numbers can be found using your periodic table and the reference tables, which is how we've been doing them in the past, and others will be determined using rules, which we'll go over. An atom that is not combined with anything has an oxidation number of zero. Okay? If it's an atom not combined with something, it is, has no charge, which would give it an oxidation number of zero. So for example, if you have sodium, Okay, we have sodium here and chlorine. These both would have no charge, so they would be neutral with a zero charge. So they have oxidation numbers of zero. The same with the rest of these. Okay, Each of these has an oxidation number of zero because they are not combined with anything. So they are atoms with no charge. Monatomic ions have an oxidation number equal to the ionic charge. You use your reference table. So for example, if we have sodium chloride, okay, sodium chloride, you go to your reference table, you'll see that sodium has a charge of plus one, and that means chlorine, if you look at your reference table also, has a charge of minus one, okay, and this equals zero, so we know that this is neutral, as all compounds must be. Oxidation number plus one, chlorine is minus one, and this gives us our charge of zero overall. Okay, for magnesium, you have a charge of plus two, and each chlorine is minus one. We have two of them, so two times minus one would be minus two, which gives us an overall charge of zero. Again, it has to be neutral. Magnesium, again, a plus, a plus two charge. Oxygen is a minus two charge. This is neutral. If it equals zero, we know we're good to go. Okay, oxygen has a minus two charge. Hydrogen has a plus one charge, and there's two of them, so that is a total of plus two. And again, that equals zero, so we're neutral. Have an oxidation number of plus one when they're in a compound. They each give their electron away, which makes them more positive. They have one valence electron. Metals in group two, their oxidation number is plus two. They have two valence electrons that they give away, which makes their oxidation number plus two. So here's our group one metal, has a plus one charge. Our group one metal potassium has a plus one. Magnesium has a plus two. Barium has a plus two. Okay, and that would help you then figure out the other side. Chlorine has to be a minus one to keep this at a zero overall charge. Bromine also, minus one. Oxygen is a minus two. Check that reference table. Fluorine is minus one, but we have two of them, which makes the overall charge minus two. Fluorine always has a minus one charge in compounds. The other halogens also are minus one, but when they are most 
only when they're most electronegative. Okay, so fluorine is always minus one in a compound. So it's fluorine minus one, sodium is plus one. Neutral, good to go. Fluorine is minus one times two, makes this a minus two overall. And in this case, which is another rule we're coming to, oxygen is a plus two when combined with fluorine. Bromine is minus 1, it's a, hal it's a halide, so minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. Calcium is a group 2 metal, plus 2. And again, we are neutral. Hydrogen is plus 1 in compounds unless it's combined with a metal, which makes it a minus 1. So HCl, our hydrogen will be plus 1 here since it's, com um, since it's in a compound and not with a metal. Chlorine is a non-metal. Chlorine is a minus one, neutral. Okay, lithium hydride. Here, hydrogen's been combined with a metal. Lithium is a group one metal, plus one, which would make hydrogen in this case have a minus one charge. The, the rule is you've got to end up with a zero overall charge unless you have a polyatomic ion. So we have to figure out the rule based on our charges overall. Oxygen is usually minus two in compounds except when combined with fluorine, when it becomes plus two. Okay, so here, oxygen is minus two, as it is in most compounds. And hydrogen is a plus one. We have two of them, so overall hydrogen has a plus two. Now when we combine oxygen with fluorine, fluorine has a minus one charge. Two of them make it minus two. So oxygen, when combined with fluorine, becomes a plus two charge. And here we have oxygen with the minus one charge. It's giving you what the charge is in, with the ion. Since it's a minus two overall and there's two of them, it would be minus one here. The sum of all oxidation numbers in all compounds must equal zero. So whenever you're adding up your total oxidation numbers, they must total zero or something is wrong. So we have a group one metal. Look them up on your reference table. On your periodic table is a plus one, chlorine is a minus one. So total charge here is zero. We have oxygen, minus two. Hydrogen is plus one. We have two of them, so two times plus one is plus two. Oxygen here is minus two, times four makes this minus eight overall. Magnesium is a group two, so it's plus two. So we have plus two and minus eight, which gives us a charge here of minus six, which means sulfur here is a plus six to get this to zero. Okay, so that's how you could figure one out and that's in the middle. You would just figure out how much more you need to get to zero. So plus two and plus six would be plus eight, and our oxygen had a minus eight overall charge, so that brings us to zero. <clears throat> the sum of the oxidation numbers in polyatomic ions must be equal to the charge on the ion. So this is when we check table E and we get the uh, charge on the polyatomic ion. Okay, here's our polyatomic ion, H3O. It tells us the overall charge here must be plus one. Okay, so we can figure out the charge on each part here. Oxygen has a charge of minus two, right? So oxygen is a minus two. And hydrogen, each of these would be plus one times three, would be plus three. So plus three and minus two is an overall charge of plus one, so that works out. Now this has to have an overall charge of minus two. We have three oxygens times minus two would be a minus six charge, which means carbon has to be a plus four. Okay, minus six plus four gives us an overall charge of minus two. Hydroxide has an overall charge of minus one, and that's the overall charge. Hydrogen has a charge of plus one. Oxygen has a charge of minus two. So minus two plus one gives us an overall charge of minus one. <clears throat> so what are the oxidation numbers of the atoms in HNO3? So we always are going to use our rules. Oxygen we know has a charge of minus two. So minus two times three right, would be minus six. Hydrogen has a charge of plus one. So what has to be the charge of nitrogen in order to equal zero here? 
So minus 6 plus 1 gives us an overall charge here of minus 5. So nitrogen has to be plus 5 here in order to keep this equaling 0. What is the oxidation number of chromium in the dichromate ion chromate oxide? Okay, so our overall charge has to work out to be minus 2. Oxygen, we know, is minus 2 for each oxygen, and we have 7 of them. So 7 times minus 2 would be minus 14, and we have chromium, 2 of them. Our overall charge has to be minus 2. So we have 2 chromiums, so we can make this 2x plus minus 14 has to equal minus 2. This is one way you could set it up as an equation if you don't want to work it out uh, differently. Okay, so we are going to um, add 14 to both sides. So we have 2x equals 12. Divide by 2, and x is 6. So if we use 6 here, we have 2 times 6 would be uh, plus 12 for the chromium. We had minus 14, right? 7 times negative 2 is minus 14 for the oxygen, which leaves us an overall charge on this ion of minus 2. So that works out. So chromium's charge is plus 6. And you have two of them, so the total is plus 12. And oxygen, the charge is minus 2. We have 7 of them, so the charge is minus 14. So our overall charge here is minus 2, which is what the equation told us it should be. Some practice questions. The oxidation number of an uncombined group 2 metal is uncombined group 2. Since it's uncombined, that means it is an atom and not an ion, its oxidation number is 0. The key word here is uncombined. Once it combines with something else into a compound, then the group 2 metals would be with a plus 2 charge. Hydrogen has an oxidation number of, okay, if you look at your reference table, you'll see it could be either 0 if it's an atom, plus 1 if it's combined um, with a metal, or um, I'm sorry, plus 1 normally, and minus 1 if it's combined with the metal. So it can be any of these three. What is the oxidation number of carbon in this compound? Okay, so let's work this out. We have sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. We know that oxygen has a charge of minus 2 times 3 with a total of minus 6. Okay, sodium, we have 1, and its charge is plus 1. So its total here is plus 1. Hydrogen has a charge of plus 1. We only have 1, so that's plus 1. So right now we have a total of 2, plus 2, and minus 6. So to get to 0, minus 6 plus 2 would be minus 4. So carbon has to have a charge of positive 4 for this to total 0. Okay, so 1 and 1 is 2, plus 4 would be 6, minus 6 is 0. So you're just trying to find what value we need to make the total charge on the, um, on the compound equal to 0. So that would be a plus 4. Chlorine has an oxidation state of plus 3 in which compound? Okay, so oxygen here is minus 2, hydrogen is plus 1. So this makes our total here minus 2. Minus 1, so chlorine has to be plus 1 to make this equal to 0. We're looking for one that has an overall charge of plus 3. Here we have two oxygens, so 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. Hydrogen is plus 1, so minus 4 plus 1 is um, minus 3, so chlorine has to be positive 3 in order to equal 0 here. So that's our answer. Now this one, oxygen, three of them, times minus two would be minus six. Hydrogen is a plus one. So here our total charge so far is minus six plus one, which is minus five. So chlorine would have to be a plus five here. Four times minus two would be a charge on the oxygen of minus eight. Hydrogen is plus one. So in order to make it zero here, we've got minus eight and plus one, which would be minus seven. 
So chlorine's charge here would be plus 7. Okay, so that's how you figure out what the charge is on when they're asking you for. <clears throat> what are the two oxidation states of nitrogen in the compound NH4 and O3? Okay, these are two polyatomic ions. So turn to table E. So the, um, in the polyatomic ion chart tells us that NH4 has an overall charge of plus 1, and NO3 has an overall charge of minus 1. So for oxygen, we have 3 of them times 2 is an overall charge of minus 6, and we need to total minus 1 here. So if we have a minus 6, we can add 5 for nitrogen and end up with the charge of minus 1. So minus 6 plus 5 would equal minus 1 for this first, there's nitrogen on this side. On this side, ammonium has an overall charge of plus 1 according to table E. So we have four hydrogens, which would be plus four altogether. And we need to end up at a positive one. Okay, so our nitrogen here would need to be minus three. So minus three plus four brings us to an overall charge of plus one. So we have a minus three and a plus five, which is choice one. And that is it for today. See you next time.